Let's take a look at the security market line. The security market line shows the trade-off between systematic risk and return for an individual asset or portfolio. Contrast that with the capital market line, which shows the trade-off between total risk, standard deviation, and return for, for a combination of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio. And you ha if you haven't seen it, you may want to view the video I have on the capital market line. Now, sometimes students get confused because you have market line, market line, security market line, capital market line. Well, the security market line is, think about it, for an individual security, for pricing a security. Part of the confusion comes from the fact that the derivation of the security market line comes from the capital asset pricing model. Sometimes we call the line, you know, the capital asset pricing model. So you hear capital, you have market lines, you get confused. But try not to confuse those two. And let's take a look at how the two are related. Now, the capital market line comes about by taking a line from the risk-free rate that's just tangent to the efficient frontier. This curve here is the efficient frontier. That is, it's all the portfolios that have the highest expected return for a given level of total risk, that is, standard deviation. Now, what we want to do is we want to transfer this into a pricing model for individual securities. And here we're going to use, rather than total risk, we're going to use beta or systematic risk. And if you draw across, the risk-free rate is in the same place. It's the same risk-free rate. The expected return on the market is in the same place. And you have two points. You have a straight line. But keep in mind that the risk down here is systematic risk. It's not total risk. And just to recap, beta or systematic risk is the for asset I is the covariance between the returns of stock I with the returns of the market divided by the variance of the returns of the market. Now it turns out that if you have a special case, the beta for the market, that's the covariance of the returns of the market with the returns of the market divided by the variance of the returns of the market. The covariance of something with itself is just the variance, so these will cancel, and that's equal to 1. So essentially, what we're doing is we're creating a systematic risk that is relative to the market, where it's normalized to be 1. So if we look at this equation here, or if we look at this line, we can get the equation for it by first getting the slope. What's the slope? Remember, rise over the run. Well, the rise is the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. The run, okay, what we go horizontally here, would be beta for the market minus zero, because there's no systematic risk here. And it turns out that this is equal to one, so it's the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate divided by one minus zero, or the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So the equation for the security market line is the expected return for asset I equals the risk-free rate plus beta I times the difference between the expected return of the market and the risk-free rate. So this is a market risk premium. Okay? This is how much the market should earn over the risk-free rate. And what's interesting about this model is that all assets have the same risk. There's the same risk-free rate in the economy. Okay? We usually use a treasury bill rate or probably more appropriately a treasury bond rate because these are long-term assets we're generally pricing. And the expected return of the market, and we usually use something like the S&P 500, is the same for all assets. So the only thing that differs is beta. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose the expected return on the market is 10% and the risk-free rate is 
if the beta of the stock is 1.25, let's find the expected return for that stock. Well, we just plug into this equation here. 3% plus 1.25 times 10 minus 3 turns out to be 11.75%. If we were to graph this, we would see that here we have an asset that has a beta that's greater than the markets, and it has an expected return higher than the market. So this is what the model says we should get. We should get 11.75% if we take on a beta of 1.25. Okay, let's look at a second example. Here we're going to look at the case where we have a beta that is smaller than the expected return of the market, 0.5. So you would expect it to have an expected return lower than the returns of the market, and it turns out to be 6.5%. So again, if we look at a graph here, this is the case where beta is 0.5. We expect a return of 6.5%. So let's take a look at a, a picture here, perhaps a little confusing. I have a lot of diagrams or a lot of uh, points on the graph and a lot of uh, lines pointing around. But let me start with asset A. A is right here. This is the return it's getting, but according to the security market line, it should only get an expected return of 6.5%. All right, this is the case we just did, and it's getting 12%, so this is a good deal. You really only expect to get 6.5% for this level of risk. You're getting 12%, so you actually ought to buy this asset. If we go to asset B over here, and it's right on this line here. I couldn't quite put the, the uh, letter on top of the uh, point here, but it has a beta of one and a half, and if you plug into our security market line equation, it should have an expected return of 13 and a half percent, and it does. So this one's fairly priced, okay? So you'd be indifferent between buying it or not buying. You're not getting more of a return than you require, and you're not getting less of a return than you require, just getting the fair return. C, on the other hand, is down here below the security market line. So this is the case where it should have an expected return of 10%. In fact, it has a beta the same as the market. So it should have an expected return of 10%, yet it only has a return of 8%. So this is not a good deal. Okay, You don't want to buy this asset. So sort of to summarize that, let's take a look at the security market line. Any asset that plots above the security market line is undervalued. Okay, it's cheap for its level of risk, so you're going to get a higher expected return than you should get for the level of risk you're taking, so you'd want to buy these. And down here, anything that plots under the security market line is overvalued. That is, it's giving you a lower return than you require for the level of risk you're taking. So the security market line can be a, a very useful tool for determining whether security is under over, or overvalued. It's also useful for calculating the expected return for equity in cost of, cost of capital calculations. Um, sometimes insurance companies use this model in order to help price insurance. They figure out what's the systematic risk. They figure out what's the fair return that, that uh, shareholders to the insurance company should get and then they work backwards to figure out what premium they should charge so that shareholders get a fair rate of return. Okay? They also do that for other regulated industries like utilities, etc. So the security market line is a quite a powerful tool for pricing, for relating systematic risk. We sometimes call it market risk, risk that you can't diversify away and expected return.